It has been a devastating week of gun violence across the country. Seven men and a 12-year-old girl uh, were injured last night at two scenes following drive-by shootings here in Washington, D.C., and at least six other Americans shot this week uh, for being just in the wrong place at the wrong time. 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis died when the car she was riding in turned into the wrong driveway in upstate New York, and the homeowners started shooting. So far this year, there have been more than 160 mass shootings across this country. And joining us now with more on this, Ryan Bussey. He's a gun industry executive for 25 years, but in 2020, he quit that career. And now he's talking about this issue uh, in pretty stark terms. In 2021, he published Gunfight, My Battle Against the Industry That Radicalized America. Welcome, Ryan. We appreciate it. Um, and I want to start with a tweet that you sent out this week. Uh, it says this, GOP vision for America, be afraid of 16-year-old honor students in uh, Kansas City's 20-year-old uh, women in New York, always be prepared to shoot all-star cheerleaders in Texas. What, what did you mean by all that? Well... My story, Jim, and, and uh, thanks for having me on. I um, I lived within the machine that that built this hate and conspiracy we now live with in far too much of our country. Um, I saw with my own eyes how the NRA radicalized this whole debate. It radicalized the issue. It handed it off to the right side of our political aisle. Eventually, Donald Trump put that whole thing on steroids. And let's face it, um, fear and conspiracy were very effective political tools for the right side of the aisle, certainly for the last five or six years. Sadly, they're exactly the same things that drive gun sales. And while the vast majority of people in this country, the vast majority of gun owners are responsible gun owners, I, I count myself among those, it only takes a small percentage of people who are really affected by the sort of fear and conspiracy um, that the NRA perfected. And when they're gun owners, bad things can happen uh, incredibly quickly, like we saw in Kansas City and Albany and with the Texas cheerleaders, it's just horrific. And we've had about as many mass shootings as days this year, and we could be on a record pace as a nation for the number of mass shootings. Uh, you were raised with guns. Uh, you're an avid outdoorsman and hunter. You were just talking about that. You support the Second Amendment. Uh, but you say the issue of gun rights has eclipsed the issue of gun responsibility in this country. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, again, um, you can't have 415 million guns Many, maybe as many as 25 or 30 million assault weapons now, and pump hatred and conspiracy through certainly the right side of our media now. Um, you can't have a political system that profits and propagates irrational fear and hatred, have all these guns, and then roll back restrictions like we have in 26 states. Uh, Florida just did it. Um, so there's now permitless carry in 26 states. You can't do all that and think you're not going to have these issues. So my point here is we can have freedoms, we can be gun owners, but we can't do it without reasonable, responsible norms and regulations. It's just that it's just, again, not a perfect analogy, but you can't drive through town or through a city without speed limits and stop lines and licensing and liability insurance for your cars. It, it's going to break down if you do that. And, and guns, although protected by the Second Amendment, is a much more tenuous situation because of the horrific outcomes that can come when just a small percentage of people misuse them. Well, let me ask you about that. I mean, polls show Americans by a pretty wide margin support tighter restrictions on firearms in this country. I mean, I mean, there are lots of different ideas for that uh, and how those new restrictions could take place. But why do you suppose um, we're not seeing the country move in that direction? And what do you think it will take to get there? Well, I think it's really simple why we're not moving in that direction. And you're right. I mean, let's take universal background checks. That polls it um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 81 to 83 percent. Jim, ice cream does not poll at 83 percent, okay? Not even all flavors of ice cream poll at 83 percent. Why doesn't that get passed? I can tell you why it doesn't get passed, because guns and gun radicalization and the intimidation that they provide are now the central totem for the right side of our political aisle. And the right side, the far right of our political aisle rules the whole Republican Party now. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene's Christmas card, go look at it. Massey's Christmas card, go look at it. Lauren Boba's Christmas card, go look at it. Like, there's a reason why, why guns are so central. And Republicans won't touch this because it is their central totem, right? Who cares about policy? It's not about policy to them. It's about a culture war to them. And without guns in the middle of it, their culture war falls apart. That's why these things don't pass. 
And just recently, we saw that a number of announced and potential Republican presidential candidates appeared at the NRA convention in Indianapolis. And this is despite the fact that we've seen a lot of stories out there saying that the NRA was this weakened uh, gun lobby in this country. Uh, what did you make of that? Because I know you have a, a long history in this industry, and I, I'm sure you've seen the ups and downs of the NRA, but it doesn't seem like it's all that weakened these days if they have all of these presidential candidates going and, and appearing before their members. You're exactly right. We can talk about some of the, you know, technical weakenings of the NRA, maybe memberships down, maybe fundraisings down, maybe LaPierre is not getting $3,000 suits anymore. But I can tell you, NRA-ism is not weakened at all. If, if it was weakened, why would every single GOP presidential hopeful come in on bended knee to the Indianapolis convention last week, where really Donald Trump was the only one that was raised up in the way that, that he wanted to be? So they've already, they've already picked their horse, right? But my point here is, is that even if the NRA is weakened itself, NRAism certainly is not weakened. We are living with the repercussions of it. We're living with it in Kansas City. We're living with it every day. We, you started off the segment with seven or 14, 11 people being shot, um, seven and four, I think. I mean, this is just, we just pass it off. And I mean, a, a kid, a kid and, and her dad get shot because a basketball rolls into a yard. A 16 year old honor student is shot because he rings the wrong doorbell. Like. This is what is going to happen if we don't balance freedom with responsibility. And right now, our balance is way off.